Silver investors could make a fortune. Billionaire Eric Sprott and other top gold analysts predict that silver will dramatically outperform the yellow metal. In order to maximize your exposure to silver, consider shares of Golden Arrow Resources trading on the TSX Venture under GRG and the US as GARWF, where insiders have accumulated 50% of the company and billion dollar giant Silver Standard Resources has taken an 8% stake in the company. This company has 250 million ounces of silver resources and is headed up by the one man who is responsible for the largest silver deposit discovery in history. Learn more at futuremoneytrends.com slash silver100. Greetings and thank you for joining us at futuremoneytrends.com. I have our most popular guest. It's undeniable. You look at the views, you look at the traffic and uh, all the comments. You guys love this guy, and I love him very much too. And we're actually gonna be together in Houston. Uh, if you guys want to hang out with Andy Hoffman and I of Miles Franklin, May 20th, which is in eight days, or maybe seven days when you're listening to this podcast, uh, no strings attached. We don't have any books or CDs to sell you or uh, wealth coach, coach programs. This is just a free event. It's a precious metal question and answer session, 6.30 to 10 o'clock at the Houston Marriott West Loop right in the Galleria. Uh, I look forward to seeing everybody there. And by the way, we say 6.30 to 10, but we really mean 6.30 to when everybody's ready to go. Uh, we'll be there the whole night. Andy Hoffman, thank you for, so much for joining us. And uh, thank you, as uh, as always, for having me. I can't believe that uh, we're already up to this event. You know, I remember we did the first one in Denver back in January, and here we are doing our event in late May. And, and I think it's going to be fantastic, and I look forward to uh, to doing it with you. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, I, I look forward to meeting subscribers and, and different listeners. Uh, so May 20th, please, everybody, email Andy at a Hoffman at milesfranklin.com and you can sign up free no strings attached if you guys are uh, close to chicago in june june 24th uh, they will also have an event there but i will be in houston so i look forward to meeting all my fellow texans uh andy i wanted to start off with uh, a conversation i've been recently having with a few other people and that's with the negative interest rates and the negative interest rates because we're seeing obviously dividends i mean are being slashed over you know 400 companies last year we're at, we're at like 220 this year bond yields of course and you know negative interest rates could be deflationary in the sense that liquidity is drying up but extremely extremely bullish for gold because you look at these family offices uh with 50 million plus management I mean, even a even a small movement out of these, you know, negative interest rate type, uh, you know, accounts and into gold. Uh, I mean, this this could be one negative interest rates could be both deflationary and the most bullish thing to ever happen for gold. Um, is is that the case? Is that is that possible? Or am I way off? No, you're right. On in fact, when I think of you know, quote negative interest rates, I think of uh, in Revenge of the Sith. When uh, when when uh, the chancellor is talking to Anakin uh, and he's saying that, you know, a lot of people think some of the ways of the Sith are unnatural. And uh, they, I mean, there's nothing more unnatural than negative interest rates. There really should theoretically be no such thing. Why would you pay someone to lend you money? That makes no sense at all. And in fact, to this day, as I see, you know, the European bank and the and the, the the Japanese bank and others doing it, you're going, do they really actually think that there's some positive to be gained? Is there anyone, is there anyone actually on Wall Street or on CNBC or in Washington or anywhere who actually thinks that somehow something good will come out of this? It doesn't even make sense. It's so ridiculous. And of course, from a precious metals perspective, it's beyond, uh, it's beyond bullish because you know, we talk about all the myths. You can't eat gold and all kinds of stuff like that. One of my favorites is, well, it doesn't yield anything, so you can't buy it, as if people have never invested in anything in the world that doesn't have a yield. And in this case, actually, plain old inert gold and silver, just sitting there doing nothing, actually yield more than bonds. And the fact is, it's not just, oh, one little class of bonds. There are now $10 trillion dollars of sovereign bonds trading at negative rates around the world. In fact, it was so shocking because I remember just a few weeks ago, they said, oh my God, it's up to 7.8. Uh, and then and then two weeks ago, another article, they're up to 9.9 .9 trillion and I see rates have fallen since. So it could be 10, 11, 12 trillion by now. 
Uh, and, and you see the rates over here in the states are now plummeting after last week's um, NFP Farms report that made the, the, uh, the odds of a Fed rate hike this year now zero. So people are anticipating negative rates here. I mean, they're going to happen because that's all the Fed has left is print money and push rates lower because they think it'll make the stock market go higher. But the fact is, there is nothing more unnatural or precious metal bullish. And there is nothing that screams a clarion call that the end of the fiat currency regime is upon us. Yeah, it, it, it really is funny. Why would anybody ever do this? It, it just boggles the mind. And, and how in the hell do you unwind that position? If, if the central banks can't even unwind zero to a percent, they cannot unwind this. So there's no going back. Uh, you know, last time we you were on the show, we talked about Stanley Drunken Miller. He's got incredible returns. He, he just completely crushes Warren Buffett's over the last three decades, although all of these guys have struggled for the past seven years. However, with that said, last time you were on the show, we talked about how he went from zero to 30 percent position in his portfolio for gold. And I just saw I think it was on yesterday on Zero Hedge uh, in Bloomberg, Carl Icahn is now 149% net short. Uh, you know, for the audience, basically, his short position is now 150% bigger than his long position. Andy, that is, I think that's significant. Uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, you got guys like Carl Icahn and Stanley Drunken Miller. They're doing some, I mean, these are drastic things that they're doing, dramatic changes to their portfolios. Okay, well, first of all, no offense, I couldn't give a flying F about either of those people or anyone else. The fact that someone had good returns uh, as a hedge fund manager at some point in the past doesn't mean they'll have good returns in the future. Uh, and there are plenty of other of these guys we can single out who uh, have done, who did great and did poorly. And frankly, I'll bet you if you looked at Stanley Drucken Miller or Carl Icahn's returns, you'd see plenty of bad years also. And I don't, I mean, Carl Icahn, he's just a guy who basically is into this whole, uh, you know, shareholder activism now where he just, you know, he's basically a, a hanger on to the cartel. And, you know, when they go, typically when they go off that, because right now the PPT is still there doing their thing. And, uh, and if he's going to go against them, you know, there's a good chance he's going to get his head handed to him. So, again, I don't really care about any of these guys. Look, I wrote an article four years ago called Hedge Bombs. I mean, I worked in the hedge fund industry. I understand what a ridiculous, uh, you know, value uh, pro um, proposition it is. These guys are all losing money. They're going out of business left and right. So why do I care what hedge fund managers are doing? That said, <laughs> in relation to uh, precious metals, what I've been talking about all year long is the dramatic increase in institutional uh, 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 institutional investment in precious metals that we haven't seen for years. I mean, the fact that there's big buying of the uh, of the mining stocks after all these years and the uh, the, the uh, premiums on the closed end funds have gone positive. Uh, you, you saw PSLV did their deal. Now, PHYS, the gold fund, has a nearly two percent premium, which means they'll be likely to do a deal soon. And of course, the ETFs have had big inflows, uh, the GLDs, the SLVs and all the others. So it's very significant. Hey, heck, I mean, Goldman, Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs covered their gold short yesterday, and I wrote a whole article today about how J.P. Morgan is now saying that this is a big bull market in gold. So again, institutionally, you're seeing people realize that, yes, we are in a bull market and we better be on the right side of this. Uh, and yes, there are going to be some people used as symbols like Stanley Druckenmiller. I mean, I don't know what Stanley Druckenmiller has done every year for the last 20 years. He's probably better than most, but I don't care. But the point is, institutional investment is increasing in this sector, and it's for good reason, because we are now in a bull market. Yeah, certainly. And and I and I guess my point more was to bring those people up, like like Ray Dalio as well, is just the fact that, you, you know, look, I, I, you just don't see these mainstream guys uh, coming out like this. Um, and it, and it's, it's very interesting because not only are they saying this, but they're backing it up with their dollars as well. Uh, Andy, when it comes to the middle class, you've really kept track of this. It's really a sad, sad story. Um, you know, it, with my own letter, I've done everything I can to try to help people, you know, really look in the mirror for their for their answers and not, you know, to the government or, or to any business or any even an, even a newsletter. But the middle class, you know, there's, there's it's just story after story. This morning on Drudge Report, they were it was talking about how Lunar Homes 
is building is now planning and building model homes with with multi-generational houses so that grandma and grandpa can live there but the young millennials can live there as well and i know you've been keeping track of this what what state is the middle class in i mean is it is there any hope to turn this around no there is no hope to turn it around because we're in the midst of the biggest financial crash of all time the biggest economic crash and it, and the root of it of course is all the money that was printed creating the great deformation of economic activity and monetary policy uh, that has put us in this position today i mean the debt is going to all be wiped out heck donald trump idiot was on on tv telling cnbc about his plans to renegotiate debt as if it's some private business dealing. He's talking about U.S. Treasuries here. Um, yeah, of course we're going to have to default on everything. And and as for the millennials, look, they've been saddled with more debt. Uh, the United States millennials, let alone everyone else in the world, have been saddled with more debt that they can't pay than any in the history of mankind. So, yeah, of course they're going to have to go a, a, and live at home because there's no jobs out there. And they have all this uh, this student loan debt the government pushed on them. Uh, for worthless degrees that they can never pay back. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with living at home or these kind of things or living, you know, like the people throughout history have. The problem is because the United States dollar has been artificially supported by the fiat currency regime, the reserve currency status that we've abused for so many years, the United States is living more above its means than any culture in the history of mankind. So when we fall back, even if we just fall back to the mean, a, re, a mean reversion, let alone the usual falling back, uh, you know, to well below, uh, you know, the you know the violent kickback, you're going to see dramatic declines in the standard of living for many people. And you know, and no one is more in the in the dead center of that target than millennials who never had a chance. Yeah, and you know, speaking of uh, Donald Trump. Maybe it's not a good idea for a presidential candidate or a president to openly talk about that. But I think what he was saying, he it was basically the truth slipping out. I mean, the fact is, he knows we're going to have to renegotiate the debt or do something about it, whether they, you know, I think he's all obviously followed up with they, they just print their way out of the debt, which we know where that goes. But I think Donald Trump, in a way, maybe it wasn't the most articulate way to put it or the way it's going to happen. But he was being very honest. The fact of the matter is the debt is unpayable, right? Oh, absolutely. But you know, what I'm trying to say here is it's not like he was trying to be honest. He was trying to say, look, there's a problem. We have to address it. He was essentially saying, you know, there's nothing could go wrong here in the United States. We're in control. Don't worry. Everything is good because me, the big private businessman who knows how to renegotiate, I know how to deal with these people. I dealt with people in real estate court. I can deal with the Chinese and the Japanese. I'll just walk up to them and tell them I'm only paying them 50 cents on the dollar and they could take it or leave it because I'm Donald Trump. That's what he's saying. He doesn't realize you can't speak like that when you have the world's most overvalued currency and, the, and you're the world's biggest debtor and the entire global monetary system relies on the full faith and current and, and uh, what is it? Full faith and cur- and uh, forget what the thing for is. Credit for the United States. Yeah, full faith and credit of the of the United States government. He's basically saying we're going to default on our debt. F you to everybody. Do you know what that would actually do to the United States? I said in a in a podcast yesterday. I said that would be a bigger global event than dropping the bomb on Hiroshima. If we actually went up to the Chinese and said, "Guess what? We're not going to pay you." And by the way, the funny thing is. It's not the Chinese that own most of the debt. It's the Fed that owns most of the debt. <laughs> the yeah. Fed owns most of the long-term debt because of, op- of Operation Twist and the QE. And, and I actually had someone uh, call me up on one of these podcasts and say, well, maybe they should just default on the Fed. I'm going, no, but the Fed's balance sheet is their balance sheet. That would be like Yum Brand saying, we're not going to pay our intercompany payables <laughs> to Kentucky Fried Chicken and, and, and Pizza. <laughs> of course they're going to have to pay. The point is... Donald Trump doesn't realize what he's saying because he he's not trying to be altruistic. He's trying to be tough. And you can't be tough when you're the biggest debtor in the world. And the entire world relies on the full faith and credit that you're going to pay people back. I mean, we have a AAA credit rating, right? You know, we, it, was, well, it was downgraded by S&P by one notch four years ago when we had five trillion less debt than we have now. And S&P was, they, they, they almost put them all in jail for doing it. But the fact is, the, we were fighting so hard to keep that that AAA rating because we said, well, well, we will always pay for our debt. Well, if he's out there, our president to be saying, I'm going to default on the debt, what will our credit rating be? I mean, if Greece is a C or a, or 
or a B minus or whatever it is, what should we be? If we tell people we are defaulting, we are a C, we are a cocoa bond. Yeah. And there are, there are there's 19 trillion of these bonds out there and all the other interest rates around the world depend on our interest rates. So the point is there's nothing altruistic about what he's doing. This debt, as you say, is as unpayable as any debt in the history of mankind. It's bigger than all the debts in the world combined. And so again, are we asking about the millennials? They're screwed. Are we asking about the monetary system? It's screwed. Are we asking about an economy that is the most oversupplied as a result of all that money printing for the past 30 years and and propping up markets and manipulating and and, and fudging economic data, everything is going to come to a head. And I think it's coming to a head now. I've said it from the beginning of this year. I don't think we can escape this year without something absolutely horrifying occurring in the financial markets and hopefully not outside of them as well. Yeah. And, you know, this whole artificial bubble in the stock market, it's I mean, I have an email going out this morning or maybe later today, but it's basically the you know you you got a five percent upside and a fifty percent downside because if you look at the buybacks you look at the dividends they're all being slashed everything that fueled this whole bubble it's 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 the unsustainability of it it's reached its end in 2016 and and it's all turning around well hey uh, Andy before we go I want to have one more question uh, it's everybody's favorite metal I want to talk about brass no I'm just joking of course I'm not talking about brass we're talking about silver um, yes. so silver. Uh, had everybody on the edge, looked like he was about to break out. I know you follow the, sup- the price suppression in detail on a daily and an hourly basis when it comes to the precious metals. And silver, it, you know, such a tiny market, very, very easy for the cartel to manipulate. But uh, just to give people the big picture, uh, silver in, in, the, in the near term right now, how does it look to you? Well, you should have asked me right before this call because silver was mm-hmm. seventeen thirty eight uh, just as we started, and look at that, it's seventeen oh three right now, and absolutely nothing has happened. It's just the exact same chart pattern as we see every day. What we're seeing now is the death throes of a cartel that is at the end of their ropes. I mean, I couldn't be more emphatic about how how screwed the commercials are, not the, the speculators. They're the ones with the record high short position. And the only way they can make it make prices even move down at all is by going even deeper into that short position and making the whole world realize what's going on here. The physical demand has never been stronger in the world. We just um, I was reading an article this morning. Uh, about the record North American uh, supply deficit. Now we're at peak production as a result of all the mine mine shutdowns and the lack of investment we've seen in the sector for the past 15 years. And of course, you know, where do you think they've gotten the physical supply to supply uh, all the buying? It's been from from reducing all those inventories, just taking inventories and using them all up. So we're in the perfect storm negative interest rates, exploding money printing. Now the Fed is is not has it can't even pretend that it's going to tighten policy. So no matter what they do, when they keep trying to smash the price here, it's only going to make the physical demand get stronger and stronger. And I firmly believe that the commercials will not be able to escape this record, uh, this record uh, naked short position that they have both in gold and silver without having to cover it like they did in 2011. Well, it remains to be seen, but really, it doesn't matter what happens on the comments. What matters is that any attempts to push prices down uh, with these fundamentals out there are just going to cause physical demand to explode. Andy Hoffman of MilesFranklin.com. You can buy precious metals at Miles Franklin. Uh, If you go to their website, you'll see there's also an off storage, uh, offshore storage program. Uh, go to events and uh, you can either use a clickable link or just email Andy at a Hoffman, milesfranklin.com. And please, uh, we're a week away. Let's meet in Houston at 6.30 p.m. Uh, at the Houston Marriott West Loop by the Galleria Hotel. Uh, look forward to meeting everybody in Houston and hanging out with you guys for uh, the whole evening. I look forward to seeing you and, and Andy Sheckman as well, Andy. Uh, again, thank you so much for your time. Same here.